Hi, welcome to Tea Time. I'm Shethi Narula and we're at JP Greens at Greater Noida on the outskirts of Delhi. Rather a windy day. It's also very chilly. But nevertheless, it's not impacting our game of golf as usual. Joining me today on the show is the founder of Yatra.com to discuss the online travel aggregator sector in much detail. On the show this week, we have Dhruv Shringi, co-founder and CEO, Yatra.com. The end objective is to figure out how do we get 100 million Indians to travel by air. Right, I think we are today at that 50, 60 million sort of a number. But the, the key is going to be in expanding that market. In news, Michael Allen wins Allianz Championship in playoff. And George Coetzee wins Joburg Open, his first European Tour title. Welcome to Tea Time. Wonderful tea. Thank you so much. Nice to see you. Indeed, yeah. amazing to have you on the show. Actually, thank you so much. So, you founded Yatra.com, the online travel aggregator website. What was the entire idea behind it? How did it all begin for sure. you? See, it began actually for me in 2002 when I joined a company called eBookers in right. the UK. So, eBookers was one of the online travel aggregators out of Europe. That uh, two three years stint with eBookers gave me the idea that in a place like India. There was a huge opportunity because the market in India was tremendously opaque. You know, sure. when you look back to what and how things were in 2005, 4, 5, at that point in time, you had the offline travel agents and there was tremendous amount of opaquecity in the market. You never knew what you were getting, whether you were getting the right deal, the right price or not. And it was also a time when the low-cost carriers were beginning to make their mark in the Indian market. So the capacity on the air side was also expanding. Those factors led us to come into India and start Yatra. So I moved back in, in, I think, early 2006 to set Yatra up. Now, talking about this industry, the sector where you play, really, January to March is definitely a lean period for most aggregators like you and um, airline sales as well. Uh, in fact, airlines are looking to beef up their coffers and literally stimulate the market. Sure. We also saw FAs rising last year and you know, they rose a little more in the second half as well. So you saw exorbitant pricing on airfares as well. But now yeah. you're seeing a fair bit of correction setting in. Sure. Do you think this is a time for recalibration to the market? Is this the right valuation at which we are selling tickets? I think what transpired in the interim period post Kingfisher going out right. was more of an external shock. Right. I don't think that's the status quo of the industry. Right. That sort of ticket prices ends up taking out a huge part of the population sure. from the uh, prospective consumer set. So what we have seen is that this kind of price point where we are right now, you know, uh, about a, a five and a half thousand rupee yield for main sectors, I think that sort of a yield works. Right. right. The good thing which has happened this time around is that the airlines in terms of trying to stimulate demand have tried to stimulate demand for a bit further out. India as a market is a very last-minute booking market. We as Indians don't seem to plan that well. And you find airlines dropping fares two, three days before departure. Sure. That is not the way revenue management is done globally. Right. So I think one thing which has happened this time, which is different, is that airlines have started this sale for uh, departure more than 30 days beyond the date of ticketing. Right. And that way they're trying to stimulate people to book early, get into the habit of trying to plan their travel. And then the last-minute traveler, who's unplanned, who has an exigency, at that point in time, you can pay charge a higher fare. Sure. So that's how the market is evolving. I think it's a good sign of maturity amongst the industry. Right. And with players like Air Asia and Tata SIA coming into the market, we'll see more of this happening. The billion OTA market contributes to about 75% uh, 
of e-commerce activities in That's India. Right. Do yeah. you see a spike in this figure going forward? And what do you, what is leading? Uh, what is the reason behind? such high numbers and such a percentage of pie in the pie chart. Sure. See, what ends up happening is, and this is a fairly universal phenomena, when the e-commerce wave takes off in a country, you will first find services, right, right, which are more frictionless in nature. In the sense, you book a ticket, you get a voucher, you don't have any physical delivery happening. Sure. It's a very frictionless transaction. So you would typically find services being the leaders and the avant-garde of the online revolution. Sure. In India, we've seen the same, right? It happened with Indian Railways, happened on the air side, it's now beginning to happen on the hotels and the holiday booking side. The market is increasingly moving online. We will continue to see this kind of growth and I think our sense is that the market, which has matured now, will start going into, you know, a certain degree of consolidation. Sure. Right? So you will see the air part beginning to consolidate. But on the hotels and holiday side, which are still in their nascency, you will see a lot more growth happening. Sure. That's where the next degree of growth will come from. You will also on the e-commerce side uh, see transaction in terms of goods pickup. I think that's but natural. So as Indians, we've tried our hand at buying you know, frictionless products like rail tickets and air tickets. Now we have you know, matured into buying goods. So if you see the way the e-commerce trend in terms of goods is taking off in the country, that's also been phenomenal growth. So we will see this industry continue to mature and it will no longer be a niche. You know, in five years time, it's not going to be that you are one of those few who's buying goods online. Sure. Right? Those not buying goods online will be the, the exception. Buying online will become the norm. So despite the depreciation that we saw in the market, we did not see vacation plans getting affected. How do you explain a situation really like this? I think uh, we have seen vacation plans slow down, uh, but what we've trans uh, seen is that it's not uh, that plans themselves have got uh, sure. deferred, but the nature of the plan has got modified. So sure. as opposed to traveling to Europe, you're now traveling more to the Far East. As mm -hmm. opposed to traveling to the Far East, you tend to prefer a more domestic holiday. Yeah. So I think the average transaction value to a certain extent has come down, right. but people are still willing to spend. Right? They want to take a vacation. I think in a in the age that we are in in India, especially in the urban middle class, right, there is so much stress around. You want a break from work. Yeah. Right? You want to live your life also at the end of the day. So recessions will come and go, but you need to live your life. And sure. I think that's what's driving a lot of this consumption around the holidays. Sure. Sure. Natures of the product will change, but people will continue to do it. In terms of traveling trends, in 2013, we saw an uptick in travel plans of people for people traveling to Cambodia, Vietnam, Thailand, Bhutan. Uh, you also see a, so a fair bit of uh, outbound tourists going to Australia and South Africa from right. India as well. What is really the trend looking like for 2014 now? Sure. I think what, uh, and you've picked up on an interesting aspect of the trend. As Indians, as first-time travelers, you know, we went and did the basics of travel. So seeing Europe, seeing South, you know, uh, Far East, Singapore, Thailand, Malaysia. But today, you want an experience. Right. Right. So you want to go to a place where you can come back and talk about the kind of unique experience you've had. Right. And what we are now seeing is even if, you know, uh, the destination is the same, the kind of experience the customer wants in the destination is evolving. Correct. You no longer just want to, you know, get into a guided tour and see and touch the, you know, six or seven key places. Right. You want to look at what's that unique experience that I can get out of it. Sure. Right? Be it cultural, be it in terms of gastronomy. These are the emerging trends that we are seeing. Right. In terms of destinations, you know, I think there is a lot of theme-based activity which we are now beginning to see. Well, it's so interesting to see some nice trends picking up for the year 2014. Dhruv enlightened us on what the trends are looking out for the year 2014, whether it's wine tourism or it is adventure sports, whether it's extreme sports, whether it's safari. We're going to stay in conversation with Dhruv. Take a quick break on the other side, this and more. Welcome back to Tea Time and thank you for staying with us. We're still in conversation with the co-founder and CEO of Yatra.com, Dhruv Shingri. Now let's throw some light on the policies and regulations in this country with regards to travel and the OTA market right. as well. Let's first take up the open sky policy of the government. The government has now allowed foreign airlines to make for up to 49% sure. investment in that sector. Recently you also saw Jet Etihad, you also right. saw the JV between uh, Air Asia and Tata, Tata Sun as well. How has this all impacted the OTA industry? I think what it's doing is it's making sure that uh, the suppliers that you're dealing with are much more financially stable. You know, sure. we saw this happening with Kingfisher, and unfortunately, you know, uh, industries which are going through a high degree of volatility tend to lose consumers' confidence. Sure. Now, what we are seeing is we are seeing players who are financially more stable 
who are taking a more longer term approach to things, who look at you know things in a much more sustained manner. And that is the right approach. You know, I, I think the confidence that a consumer is now getting that uh, I'm now you know going to travel, let's say with a Tata SI when it comes in, right. or in Air Asia is immense, right? So we need players like that and no more players like that who will help mature the market. The end objective is to figure out how do we get 100 million Indians to travel by air, right? I think we are today at that 50, 60 million sort of a number. But the, the key is going to be in expanding that market. And to do that, we need players who have a sound investment plan, who've got the capital behind them, and who've also got you know, the, uh, the acumen in terms of the business acumen and the technical know-how to be able to grow this business. Travel aggregators like you really work on thin margins. If I'm not mistaken, most travel aggregators that I've been in talks with look at a margin of up to 4 to 5 percent. Right. Um, what is the business sustenance model really like? This business is about leveraging technology to drive scale. You know, in, a, in any business as, as this, as you rightly pointed out, which are such thin margins, sure. you need the scale to make the business work. Sure. You know, without having appropriate scale and volume, it's not going to be a sustainable business. Hence, our focus is definitely in terms of trying to scale up our business. Right. We've today, uh, you know, got, if you look at the number of Indians who are buying uh, domestic flights, so about 40 plus percent of the domestic air tickets are booked online. You right. contrast that with the US, which is at 60%. Sure. So I think there's a great opportunity over there. So you've got an expanded market and you've got the chance of the channel increasing. So both of those combined will continue to drive volume growth for the next few years. And we will continue to use technology to automate as much as possible to drive down the cost of delivery of the service. So those are the two vectors, you know, scale and making sure you leverage technology to drive down the cost of delivery. What's your take really, Dhruv, on the Ministry of uh, India's campaigns like Find What You Seek and Incredible India? Is that helping the OTA businesses in this country? I think that to a great extent is focused more on foreigners coming into India. Yeah. Right? Uh, I think today uh, foreigners are more dependent and reliant on the group tour operators as opposed to the OTAs, but definitely that market will also move online. But I think the impact that some of the state tourism boards are having on domestic tourism is immense. Right. You've seen campaigns from the likes of Kerala who have been there for a while. You've seen Gujarat being very active. We've seen states like Jammu and Kashmir promoting Ladakh and Leh. So I think that's what's having a huge impact on the domestic tourism sector. So while the inbound tourism sector still remains a bit weak, you know, given that uh, our traditional markets of Europe and US are going through a recession or just coming out of one, sure. plus the fact that there is a bit of negativity around India as a market as it being an unsafe destination on sure. account of all the recent events that have happened. Right. So inbound is still, I think, uh, struggling a bit. Right. But domestic tourism definitely, thanks to the efforts of the state tourism boards, mm -hmm. is gaining a lot of momentum. What is your take on the proposed visa on arrival scheme, which is for targeting mainly the inbound travelers from Europe and Scandinavian countries? What if it, once it goes through and if it does, what is the trickle effect going to be like on the entire industry? I think visa on arrival is, uh, is a great initiative by the government. You know, we need more such initiatives uh, from the government in terms of promoting the destination. We need to make it as convenient as possible for foreigners to come into India. We've, uh, you know, over the course of the last three, four years, had a scenario where uh, hotel rates in India traditionally were very high. So when you compare that and contrast that with the kind of infrastructure that India has, right, right our infrastructure um, is not at par with, let's say, places in the Far East. Sure. However, our hotel rates are similar or, you know, much more expensive than those. Hence, when, as a foreign tourist coming in, you start comparing your annual holiday plan and look at, you know, the Far East, you look at India and you find it to be relatively overpriced. Right. I think that is something which has to change. 
is beginning to change now. We've seen uh, you know, much more capacity coming in on the airports. So we've seen expansion in Mumbai, Delhi, Bangalore, Hyderabad. So that is driving down some of the inbound air cost. Right? We've sure. also seen things like visa on arrival, which are now being proposed. We've seen a softening of hotel rates because we've seen more supply, especially on the four branded four and five star properties come into place. So all of that are beginning to make India again a competitive destination. Right? Sure. I think had these unfortunate events around security not happened, India would have been in much better uh, position. You know, I think uh, there's a lot of negative press that ends up happening around women's security in India. Yeah. And that's not a good thing. I think we need to do a lot of uh, educating, you know, not just our people, but also the police forces in terms of how to deal with uh, foreign tourists who are coming in, who are, you know, who find themselves in these unfortunate situations. Right. Because that negative perception has to change if you really want to grow the market. All right. So on that note, it's a good time now for us to take a quick breather on Tea Time. Dhruv and I, Chaiti Narula, we will see you on the other side where we will continue discussing the online travel aggregator business in much more detail and also throw some light on some policies and, of course, for the youth of the country and the startups, Dhruv has some tips. Thank you for staying with us on Tea Time. We're discussing some trends that are dominating the year 2014 in terms of tourism. We have golf tourism, we have wine tourism, adventure. We yeah. spoke about so many trends in the previous segments. Which one do you think is the most conspicuous and the most dominating trend for 2014? I think 2014, I think, is going to be more about sports tourism. Really? Okay. Sports I, yeah, tourism? I think so. I want it to be, you know, sports and adventure. I think those are things which are close to my heart. At some point, you want India to become a you know, mature market about that. You want Indians to experience these things. We are great f fans, right? However, we are not great travelers yet, right? So we need to start traveling for sports. You look at you know, things like Formula One, the kind of following they have, the kind of passion with which people you know, go Cup. and right? You've got the Soccer World Cup happening, which is going to be a absolutely. massive event, absolutely, right? So I think those are the kind of things that we now, as Indians, coming back to that concept of experiencing things, yeah. need to start going for. Do you yourself enjoy a lot of golf tourism as well? Do you play do, all around you know, the world? We Where try and do that, you know, even at Yatra, we've been organizing a corporate golf tournament. Yeah. Uh, we had Srinagar one year, we had uh, Thailand the other year. And, you know, we want to explore new destinations. We are now exploring, you know, places like Dubai and Abu Dhabi. So we want to encourage people to take up sports and, you know, go out and experience them. There is a huge world out there. Please go Absolutely. out and explore it. Are companies like you also uh, enjoying the benefits of the mobile penetration that we're seeing in the market increasingly? Because as mobile apps become more popular, you're seeing more people book tickets and hotels through their apps more than anything else. I think mobile has been a game changer and really? will be a game changer. You know, this what we are seeing is just the tip of the iceberg. For a lot of Indians, the first mobile, first internet interaction will be through a mobile device. Right. Right. The way tablet penetration and this phablet penetration is coming into you the call market. It the phablet. Yeah. So it's a what combination of a phone and a tablet. Oh, right. Really? So <laughs> these sort of devices will become or have the potential of becoming the main entertainment devices, consumption devices in families. Right. right? And they will suddenly bring everyone online. Changing the entire paradigm right. altogether. So for people who currently or, you know, till recently were not able to come online, right, have been able to come online True. with very seamless connectivity. And I think as things go forward, we'll start to see roll, roll out of 4G networks. We will see cost of uh, broadband consumption come down. Yeah. I think these will drive penetration even more. So I think there is a huge revolution which is happening in the background. And if as an organization, you don't watch out for it or plan for it, I think uh, you run the risk of becoming obsolete very soon. Okay, let's finish our game and we continue talking. Come. A lot of industry estimates are suggesting that in the year F514 going forward in the fiscal year rather, you're seeing a jump up of 40% in the revenue on the back of hotel bookings really picking up. How true is that? I think that's a fairly accurate assessment. Uh, we are seeing hotel transactions being the growth drivers. So as I mentioned, you know, as Indians, we've tested the waters of online travel by booking a domestic flight, which is a fairly simple transaction, right? right? You know what to expect when you get in, you know what kind of service you will get. 
The hotels are a bit more complex because uh, the nature of the product is still not very uh, homogeneous. Right. So while uh, you've got branded capacity of four and five star hotels, the two and three star segment still remains broadly unorganized. So now we are beginning to see you know, people willing to take that chance of booking uh, hotels and holidays, especially the hotel segment. So you want to book a standalone hotel. And what is happening is that OTAs like us are guaranteeing the customer's experience. So if something goes wrong, we guys are there to make sure that we handhold the customer. If there is you know, a deficiency in service, we try and make good on that. If the hotel, for whatever reason, you know, is not able to provide uh, the room, we upgrade the customer. So all those reassurances are being provided by us to get the customers to start transacting online sure. for hotels also. And we are seeing very, uh, you know, a tremendous traction on it. We are seeing at the moment triple digit growth on it. So what do you really advise the youth watching you today on how much of uh, potential lies in the OTA business for the startups? I, I think the OTA business... And I ask you this question yeah. because you were somebody who sure. were daring enough to start something hmm. so fresh like Yatra.com. You right. founded it. So sure. what were the initial hiccups and would you advise the new uh, bud budding entrepreneurs to follow your path as well? I think, you know, in India at the moment, people like us are going through a once in a many generation opportunity. Sure. Our parents never had it. It's unlikely our kids will have it of this kind of, you know, blockbuster growth. Right. Maybe the last 12 months have been a bit slower on that front. Right. But if you look at, you know, over a 10-year horizon, right. this kind of growth is something that the U.S. witnessed, you know, at the time of the baby boomer generation. China sure. saw it in the 90s. And we are very fortunate to get it. So my sense is that if you get the opportunity, right, even half chances, you should capitalize on it. Right? Right. You need to be bold and you need to be willing to take the chance. You know, I think more often than not, I find that younger people right now are not uh, willing to come out of their comfort zone. Sure. There is a certain degree of complacency. I feel it's very important to shake yourself up and use this opportunity that you've got. You know, you're literally blessed by being in, born in the right place at the right time Absolutely. to capitalize on this. It's a single lifetime that we have. Sure. Right? There's no point just sitting back and waiting for it to go by. Right? I mean, you took Try a chance years the ago. Moment. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Carpe diem. Carpe diem. That, yeah. That's your life yeah. mantra on that wonderful yeah. note. Thank yeah. you, Dhruv, well, for joining me so on much. Tea. Pleasure's mine. Yeah. On that note, that's a wrap from Dhruv and me, Chaiti Narula. Indeed, fun chatting with him on the green. I will see you next week again with another interesting guest from an entirely different sector altogether. Until then, as cliched as I may always sound, enjoy the flight of a good drive. See you next week.